Hey, hi, hello everyone. I'm Omen Work, and today I'm really excited to share it on his 4.0 with all of you guys. Now, 4.0 has not been released officially because there is some learning stuff that's still pending, including docs. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how actually Adonis 4.0 apps looks like and what are the fundamental changes that have been done within the framework and the reason behind them. So first things first, uh, what I've done is I basically moved all the packages uh, under an NPM organization and a namespace called at the rate Adonis JS. So this way you can easily spot which are the official packages and which are the one which are served by community. Okay, uh, with that done, let's quickly get started and create a new app. Now, in order to create a new app, the very first thing we need to do is we need to install the CLI. So I'm gonna say npmi uh, global at, at the rate on SJS slash CLI. And if you will remember, it's namespace now. Okay, once the CLI has been installed, we can run Adonis to verify that Adonis is available as a global command. And you can see here are a bunch of commands that you can basically run in order to, you know, like create a new project or do different things. So the one we're going to use is we're going to use Adonis new to uh, create a new project. So I'll say Adonis new. And as always, uh, we're going to say Yorkstake. That's our project name. Okay, once that's done, just cd into the project and run Adonis serve. But I'm also going to use a flag called slash slash dev, which will automatically restart our apps whenever we change any faults. So, okay, yep, we have it. It says it's running on localhost and we do get our welcome page. Okay, guys, uh, next thing what we're going to do is we're going to open this project inside our editor. That's sublime for me. And we're going to talk about some changes that have been done in the project structure. Even, even before we get started, one of the things that I've been hearing quite a lot is that Adonis JS is meant to be write really big monolith kind of applications, which is not true at all. And the reason behind that thinking was because Adonis JS apps comes with so much that at times you feel like I don't need even 50% of stuff from here. So, but with Adonis 4.0, your projects are really small, as small as Express, but of course not a single file server. But still, it's quite slim. Uh, if, we, if we look at the app structure, uh, within the root, we have a server.js file, which basically boots up your uh, HTTP server. Then we have an ace file that boots up your command line tool to run ace commands. And apart from that, we only have one directory apart from node modules or your static assets. And that directory just contains a couple of files. So one is your app.js, that's to register the providers, your aliases, commands, and all that stuff. Kernel.js file to basically register your middleware. And finally, the routes file to declare your routes. That's pretty much all. There is no app directory, database, and all that stuff. Now, all of the boilerplate code to, be, to bootstrap your app has been removed and abstracted to a new package called Igniter. Now, the reason that has been done first is so that you can easily upgrade to a new version of Adonis without patching those files manually. And whenever Adonis JS gets updated, you can basically update the Igniter package and you get all the, all the updates right away. And also within your uh, app file, there is only one provider that's being shipped by default. And it has like almost everything to, you need in order to run a proper HTTP server. Now, you'll be thinking now if Adonis is really small, you will have to do everything by hand in order to actually grow your app. But that's not true. And uh, let me show you out here. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to use a new Adonis JS command called Adonis install. So if I say Adonis install help, you can see it can basically install uh, a, a provider from NPM or, or Yarn for you. But not only it installs uh, the module for you, it does a lot more than that. So let me let me show it to you. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say it on is install and basically install the body parser package. Okay, once that's installed, you can see 
Uh, apart from installation, there are, there are a couple of things that have been done. Very first, it created a config file for you automatically. So if you go to the config directory, yep, we do have the body parser config file to basically tweak the configuration. And also it opens up a new HTML file, which basically shows you how to register this provider, how to register the middleware or any other extra information that you need to know in order to use body parser. Now, this all is not baked into the core. In fact, the providers can basically instruct Adonis to do these things after installation. So if you go to node modules and open the body parser package, out here you can see there is an instructions.js and instructions.md file. The JS file is just an exported function which can do like anything that package really want to do. Uh, it also gets an instance of the CLI uh, from which you can use methods like copy or call some ace command or generate a template and all that stuff. So this package basically makes use of the copy command to copy the config file to the correct location and the instructions file is just plain markdown which um, tells you on how to make use of the provider, how to register it. And the best part about this markdown file is it's part of the source control. So at any point of time, you can like simply jump to the body parser or GitHub repo and you can read it manually as well. And uh, now by this way, uh, really first, not even a single project of yours has extra stuff living in there of, uh, without any reason. And any time when you really want to, you know, like grow your apps, you can install these packages. They do almost everything you need in order to get started. For example, the auth package will create the models for you, will create uh, migrations and all that stuff for you out of the box. And that's not living in your in your project if you don't use auth. So that's that's something really really powerful. Uh, the very next thing we're going to talk about is it's routes and how actually you get information within your routes. So let's quickly remove this. Okay, and out here you can see instead of doing request and response like this, uh, now you can basically make use of ES6 destructuring to pull uh, anything that you really need. So you can say, uh, all I need is just request, I don't need response. And not only request and response, you can like pull uh, things like art, session, and everything from, from this context object. So let's say we want to use the views right now. So we're going to say return view.render, render a view called home for us. And if you go back, refresh, yep, we do get an error because views are not configured by default. But it's really, really simple to configure them. If I copy it and rename it to view provider, Okay, yes, the error does get changed. Now it says uh, the home.edge file is missing. We can create it quickly by saying Adonis make uh, view home, come back. Yep, there are no errors, but we have an empty view. And as always, views are inside your resources views directory. Uh, let's say hello world from view. And yep, we do get it. Uh, one more important thing is we are not using uh, Nginx anymore. Uh, and so we switch to uh, Edge, which is kind of a homegrown template engine created by me itself. Uh, Edge has a lot of really good stuff in it. You can always go to, you know, like uh, edge.adonisjs.com to learn more about it. And Adonis will have documentation on it as well. Now, your route actions or your controller methods can basically make use of async await feature. Now, it's really awesome. It's way faster uh, than ES6 generators. And the methods that you actually await, you can even call them like processes. So this is, this is, this is something really nice. Uh, one more thing that I've been changed is you won't have to use response every time to make response. It's not important to say response that's in view.render every time. Now, what you can do is you can return almost anything from your route and it will get rendered. So let's say if you want to return some plain JSON, uh, we can say username, work, come back, refresh, yep, it does get rendered at JSON. So you can 
basically return anything and returns feels more natural uh, than using the response object itself. Now, of course, you may have to use it at times when you want to set the status, maybe let's say 201 and for, and, and for things like that. Uh, the best part is now you won't have to like you know like create separate files for almost everything uh, with the, with Adonis 4.0 uh, everything can be an inline stuff for example for middlewares you won't always have to bind uh, anything like a file to it um, middleware can be plain functions as well so if I say a function console.log uh, I have been called uh, go back to our command line out here, refresh the page, and it says, I have been called. Now, your middleware can basically be like plain functions, and they can do like almost anything that you really want to do. And it's not only about middleware, like almost anything can be just, you know, like plain closures. For example, uh, we want to create an ace command. So what we can do is we can say constant ace, pull the ace package, uh, let me remove these comments to have some space out here. And next we can say is uh, ace.command greet with a function. And if we go back and say node ace, yep, we do see the greet command out here. And it's so simple and so plain. Now the next best thing is you also won't have to always run node ace. Now you can also run Adonis to run your project commands. So what Adonis really does is uh, this global command line thing, which will proxy all of your project commands. So if I run Adonis, yep, we can see our good greet command as, uh, out here as well. But if I move to a different directory that's not an Adonis project, you will not see the greet command. So in short, uh, it basically proxy all of your ace commands. Let's give this command a description as well. Uh, greet someone with a name. So if you say Adonis, yep, we do get uh, the description out here. And if you want to accept the name, we can accept it here. Then get it back here and simply say console.log hello daughter name. Okay, and if we run Adonis, greet my name. Yep, it does say hello work. It's really simple to write these command line apps without creating those extra unnecessary files. Now, if you have really small projects, it's fine. But of course, if you have big projects, you can always um, move these to the individual command files. And same goes for route actions as well. You should be creating controllers for them. Now, let's move to another uh, part of the application that's at times you really want to do things when your application get booted. Now people get really confused where to put this stuff, where to actually hook in the life cycle and how to do almost everything. Uh, what you can do now is you can like simply create a hooks.js file inside your start directory. So if I say start hooks.js and simply pull hooks from the igniter package, so we can say at the rate and on SGS, uh, igniter. Now, what we can really do is we can say hooks that before that providers registered, and before really like the providers have been registered. If you want to do anything, you can simply say console.log uh, before providers are registered. Go back, yep, it does run your hook, and if you want to do something after you can say like after it says before providers are registered after they have been registered and this way you can basically hook into any life cycle of the application and you can do your own custom stuff okay and of course you can get a list of all the hooks uh, within within the official documentation so that's that's one way to actually hook into the application life cycle and write your own custom stuff and if you want to actually make it more manageable if you're doing too much it's always a great option to create providers and basically register them out here and do it that way uh, okay guys uh now i'll be doing a couple of more videos on showing you how to how to basically make use of the new shiny testing engine of it on sjs that's going to be a, a, a big video in itself 
And um, we're also going to talk about some performance improvements, like Adonis 4.0 is like almost two times faster than Adonis 3X. So yeah, that's pretty much all. Thank you.